Uh, let's get right into it. Game of Thrones Season 3. Let's talk. Now, since we're on the topic of the Starks, let's talk about Arya Stark. Is that her name? Did I pronounce that right? I was all confident. Watch, I pronounced that wrong. <laughs> it's called Arya Yar Stark. I have no clue what I'm talking about. Arya Stark, uh, she does have some interesting story in Season 3, but I do have to say, me personally, it did not get interesting until she met up with the Hound. From that point on, I, I was really, really, really liking the direction that they went with Arya and the Hound uh, tra as traveling companions. And it's kind of the same thing they did with uh, Jamie Lannister and Brienne of Tarth, because it's like an odd couple, an odd pair. And it works out really, really well, you know. Uh, the characters can play off each other, and even the the backstory of the characters. It immediately it just should not mesh the way it does. And I know that Jamie and uh, Brienne form a completely different bond than Arya and the Hound, if they do at all. But I I loved seeing them on the screen every time their story came up. I was like, okay, this is going to be something that's at least uh, you know, witty. <laughs> at least something I can giggle at because some of it was uh, some of it was pretty funny. <laughs> but one thing that's a little weird in the trial by combat that the 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 who are those people? The bandless brotherhood or the brotherhood of no banners or some crap like that. Now they give the hound a trial by combat, and I believe it's because uh, Ned Stark gave that guy, who's actually played by a completely different actor, yeah, they gave him an order to hunt down the mountain, or the hound, I forget which, but I heard that's why they did that trial by combat, and the the hound said something like it wasn't my brother, and Arya was like, oh, you killed that kid, but it doesn't matter. They do the trial by combat, and the hound literally chops his sword right into that dude's collarbone and everything, like halfway into his chest. And he falls over, next thing you know, the guy's praying on him, and he gets up. My thing is, the, the god of light, or the light god, red god, or whatever that is, he heals him, right? He heals him so he can live, all his internal organs and everything, and his bone, he's, you, they definitely, the sword definitely chopped through his collarbone and everything, you know, crushed bones, shit's fucked up, the lungs, I mean, there's just, everything's destroyed. And he heals all that, but he has a scar? Wouldn't that heal up too? Wouldn't it be like Wolverine when he heals up? I mean, if the guy's going to heal him up and bring him back to life, why would the only thing that's going to scar be his skin on the outside? I don't get that. Huh. I mean, I know he lost an eye and he brought him back, but why wouldn't the eye heal? Just something I was thinking about. It doesn't really affect the story. It's just something I was curious about. So if you know, go ahead and let me know. But if it's no big deal, uh, you know, it's no big deal to me either. <laughs> I'm just curious. And I believe that's all I have to say about Arya. Because I did talk about her in Season 2, I'm almost sure. And I will be talking about her more in Season 4 review. So, let's move right on to her sister, Sansa.